Ooh. Okay, so you're gonna take me on this little this little tour. Yeah. Uh, now, th again, this whole space here, I should tell you this. I have a history in this space. Before yeah. you had all this, in other words, they used to have. Uh, they still had the, the gap here, but this was sort of closed in a little bit. But there was this big gap, and we did it. Or we did a uh, audio drama here one time. It was mm. bigger, and it was amazing. Uh, so before you all did all this stuff, this way, this like a, this, this this like 15 years ago, whatever it is. Uh, yeah. Before before Philippi Village became, yeah. well, have you all built this thing up? But anyway, so now t again, tell me, uh, you was going to tell me about this piece here. This piece here. Oh, this oh this not this one. This one here. This one just came uh, okay. Inside. Okay. So this piece is done by an artist based in Johannesburg called Dibons. You mm -hmm. know, he's mm -hmm. a friend of mine. Oh, um, she's also, beautiful. He also plays a role of mentor because his skills, you know, he's very um, beautiful and how he articulates, you know, um, black consciousness, mm -hmm. to put it blunt and raw in that sense. Mm -hmm. First things first, what struck me about this piece is her hair. Her hair, and how her hair is, you know, tied up in the form of a crown. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And hair is a very sensitive issue, especially in our modern day age. Why I'm saying that is because I say I'll never rest on this. It stresses me until I see perhaps a white person buying a weave of an afro. Mm. Then I would understand how, you know, um, it's, it, then it would be cool for me. But until, you know, um, our people go back and start embracing their hair mm. and remembering who they are and having to use our history and mm -hmm. our, our foundation as a firm stick um, on this exodus mm -hmm. because we are on an exodus there is no end to this journey mm. of growth there is no end to a journey of a nation restoring itself mm. in a form of craft in a mm -hmm. form of um, mm. academics in a form of getting to know and trace who we are mm -hmm. so we can better position ourselves and in this piece you can see the beef uh. beef is this in course i don't uh, i don't know what they call it in english but it, it, it's this calf and this is normally like to tie you make sure your pant doesn't fall yeah yeah but it's a symbol of um awareness and firmness and readiness mm -hmm. and if in Kosa, there's a famous saying when you're in an argument with somebody mm. and some a, a woman would say Uzonda's band ping and doing that means she, she's saying to you, you will know what I tie my dress with. And if she's saying that, she's like, I'm gonna go full strength on you. You know, mm. it's a sense of readiness, like renegade. And she's got it, it's right there, and it's big, it's not even small. In our days they made belts. Mm -hmm. It also stands as a belt, but it's, it, 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 it's a great symbol of an indication of someone who's saying, I'm going to stand my ground mm -hmm. regardless the circumstance, uh -huh. and there's only one way forward for me, mm -hmm. you know? And the pat in, in her clothes, see the crown in, under her collar, you see how the crown in her collar end in the, in the middle of her belly, mm -hmm. you know, the contrast, how it balances and how she kept her composure. She's not sad, mm -hmm. she's not smiling, but she's barely like almost not giving any free information. She's keeping her composure. It's where, uh, the word I would use, she looks determined. Exactly, exactly. And there's a sense, if, if, if you look at the, the painting very close, there's a sense of light coming behind her. Mm -hmm. Ah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a sense of light tone coming behind her. Mm -hmm. I mean, we would say in course Agaambi Yetwa, she's not alone. You're not alone. There's yeah, yeah. always an army, you know, mm -hmm. of ancestors wherever you are. They mm -hmm. are. We believe that mm -hmm. um, Christianity, Christianity ideology would say angels. Mm -hmm. But, you know, African philosophy would say this nyanya. It's our ancestors. Mm -hmm. We are understand. And you find that both of these characters play similar roles. However, there's a different perspective on it, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, they, they, what intrigues me now, I see the, the, with the dress, you see these like, uh, uh, what, I don't know which, 
this this pattern here yes these patterns here and it goes all the way down and it really doesn't it really doesn't fade but it goes all the way down but it's almost like uh it'll keep on going <laughs> you know what i mean in other words it, there was, it doesn't stop at the bottom it just keeps on going yeah, exactly. throughout the earth throughout the other side of the planet and i guess because also because of the shapes you know, if, if the planet is actually, uh, what is it called, spherical, you know mm. what I mean? It's not, it's not really round, it's spherical. This is, that's the same thing, you know? Check this out. The sleeves in a shirt, they're not like buttoned up like us, they uh, opened. Uh, okay. And there's, there's a sense of freeness, uh, yeah. Yeah. if you see. Yeah. A sense of, um, I'm free but I'm still collected and I can still be me, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, same, I think, I get, you get the same feeling when you paint as a visual artist. You want to wear something that's let go, mm -hmm. but you know, still mm -hmm. be me and be free, you know what I mean? Uh, what, uh, what, a control freedom, what are you saying? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, and his thing. In our days, this is umsimelelo in Kosa. It's a, a walking stick. Yeah, yeah, sure. Back in the days, it used to be longer. Like that, it used to be longer. Walking stick used to be longer because, first of all, rule number one, it's supposed to be a walking stick. How you see it? Rule number two, whatever you come across in the bush or the jungle, you're gonna use the same stick to yeah, yeah, yeah. confront danger and um, buy a sense of being alive to communicate with anyone to come and help. Mm. And also, if you come across a river, if you wanna see how deep is the river so that you can cross, uh. you put your stick first. Mm -mm. Um, the funny part is over the years, the stick has went shorter up to a point we no longer carry it anymore. We are ashamed. Mm. And here in the city, if you see a black person carrying a walking stick, you know it's a country folk. Right. You, you like you know you like uh, this is a country folk right here because now now I'm so a little confused not only really kind of confused but uh, I have a theater background in a long time this this is in the 60s mm. I I I I, I, uh, I was working on a set a, mm. a set it was for a play called Kungi's Harvest sure and because for that play there, there was stick fighting in there mm. done by by men so we had to learn stick fighting mm. uh, but what I'm saying that so my understanding was that well that's a male thing mm. with the sticks but mm. it's for well, what you just said also, but also so, also was a fighting thing. Mm. So my question is, why does she have a stick? And okay. she's not a male. I mean, what? what? Um, a stick is, she, long story short, it's not a physical stick. It's a statement. Ah, ha, ha. This is like um, ruler. For example, if she would, if, if, if she would be in a, in a room, or in an environment where she has to speak, she's not allowed to raise her voice because she's gonna be out of character. And as a leader, you can't be out of character. You can't be seen shouting. It's not a symbol of awareness to shout. Mm -hmm. if, if you're shouting, you're already uh, like mm -hmm. bazaar. But what, what, what Asian people would do if they wanna speak, they will hold their stick up and very hard on the ground. And mm -hmm. the noise or the vibration is supposed to bring awareness on the people that somebody wants to speak mm. it's the same thing when bull, what bulls do before they fight they do this on the ground mm, 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 to mm. show um, strength and um, claiming the environment that I'm in control mm, here mm, mm, I'm in charge mm, mm, here and that stick mm. is that statement of ah, rulership okay okay and uh, last but not least you're not supposed to point fingers at people with our fingers mm, mm. that's a sign of being rude mm. so you would use a stick Two point, or you know what I mean. Draw attention. One last, well, one last thing. I'm sure you have a lot to say because I really enjoy talking to you. <laughs> at the at the top of the stick, yeah. there's three. Let's let's call three points of light. Mm. I don't know if we can see it, but my camera, what I'm doing right now. Uh -huh. But as you may or may not know, three is one of those sacred numbers. It says is the most sacred. It's the most derivative, like three, seven, nine, whatever. But but three. I what? Why did? Well, you know the artist, but. Sure. Does that have any significance? Those three, those three um, points of light that's coming to the sticks. No more like sure. three, three comets coming, three comets coming through the, through the sure. stick. Yeah. You know, uh, the tree keeps appearing in this artwork. First of all, you look at the beads. It's tree. It's yeah. One, two, three. Mm. This the tree, mm. and then you look at the the, um, the crown. Mm, yeah. The crown under her collar. Yeah, yeah. It's tree. Um, 
it's three arrows up yeah, if, yeah. if you see, see it. Like but a crown, yeah. in the native in the, in the native custom way of doing things mm-hmm. tree is very important mm-hmm. but that's a conversation for manhood in a way we reference it to Easter to Easter team before what's funny about African custom is the more you look at Christianity the more you see how they have adopted or sampled from African customs sure, sure. and I look at it I'm like oh in Christianity they have the Son the Father the Holy Spirit but as the, the people mm. and we can it, 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 it's more like a door code to enter into another mm, mm, and mm. if you want to have a conversation with someone with um, a certain knowledge the only thing you have to do is say that code and they'll be aware that oh this individual is in sick or in search of such mm. therefore I should be comfortable to give them if they already know how to knock on the door they, they have a sense of awareness of what's inside. Okay, let me just understand this because you said something that's important to me, mm. okay? You said the word seek. Yes. To seek, S-E-E-K. Yes. Are, are you suggesting that three is a seeking number? I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out what, you know. It's a, it, 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 it's a code that indicates that this person is in search. Mm-hmm. Do you know? Mm-hmm. But you have to say the code, you know, in breaking down the code in three terms. Yeah, understand? Okay. Exactly. Now, when you say, it's more like reading the constitution in parliament mm. or quoting it literally right then and then. Then, whomever MPs are there, they will be aware that this person is not even trying to argue with us. He's reading this here now. He's saying the code now. And this person having to indicate such, you know, it's if the artist is saying, study the artwork, but go back home and do your own research based on this. And all the information that is placed upon here is mm. supposed to provoke thought. Mm. And that is done in a beautiful manner that now we are already discussing and unpacking mm. symbolism. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. painting, what writers put in 500 pages, a painter has to put in one wall or one canvas. Surely, surely, surely. And to a point, you know, visual art, in all forms of art that are practiced, visual art, I'm not saying mm-hmm. comparison is fair or anything, mm-hmm. but visual art having to be able to decode mm-hmm. and use symbolism mm-hmm. to communicate without even saying a word and be able to get the message across mm-hmm. to the viewer. Mm. It's, it's, it's an amazing form of art of yeah. doing things. Wow. Well, thank you so much for this. It's this in-depth. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I don't want to... We, we say, I don't want to stroke you or nothing like that. But I do have to ask this. It's going to be a dumb question. I don't really like these kind of questions. Okay. But the amount of wisdom that you just imparted, uh, at least to me, just on this one... I, I think if we went to each one of these triptychs or each one of these uh, pillars, p- pillars, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pillars you will give me another half hour of, of what's going sure, on sure. so the question is who are you well how old are you where did you come from <laughs> you know you, you, you understand what I'm trying to say yeah, yeah. I mean you, 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 know, you know let me put this way if I was an art teacher art professor I had a class I said hey yeah look we're gonna go someplace right now but this is our guy we're going to talk. Don't forget, I'm not talking no more. You know what I'm saying? Oh because I, I, he knows a lot more than I do. And go ahead, tell, tell me something. Uh, my name is Lindy Sipo Gula. Mm-hmm. And I'm from a clan called Amam Fingu. Mm-hmm. Um, well, let's go. It's a little bit windy. Let's keep on walking. We'll, we'll yes, keep on walking. Go ahead. You, you keep on yes, talking. Sir. Go ahead. Um, my mother's name is Tenji Swan. My father's name is Rafael. And I was born here in Cape Town. My parents... Wait, 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 hold on a second. Raphael does not sound like a closer name. No, no, <laughs> no. My father was um, a colored man. Mm. Um, his father was chief called Ngwaibanjwa. When you say colored, do you mean like from, from, from the Kwasan people? What kind of colored are you talking about? Um, in South Africa, the term colored refers to um, your father being white and your mother being black. Oh, okay. okay. In, in South, I've seen it internationally that the term colored means black people, not in South Africa. Yeah, yeah. If you say colored, you're not talking to black people. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and um, I believe, in a sense, that a part of my intellect has to do with um, 
being raised in a rainbow home, in a rainbow nation, having um, different parents and speaking different languages and having to experience what it feels to be on Papa's side and having to see how you are treated as a child and how the world is so different out of a sudden. And then um, I am in my mother's home and they are black, 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 black and having to see how they are treated. By so the so no, you're saying that your mother is as dark as your, as your, as your, as your collar here. Yeah. <laughs> and you your, father is, is your father is uh, half, you know, well. Yeah, yeah. Snowball. Let me I talk to my people here. I didn't say that, okay? <laughs> don't, don't look at me, okay? This is what he, he did that. Okay, <laughs> you know, um, but I grew up, you know, aside that um, a difference, because difference can also be good in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a standing on a point of perspective. Mm -hmm. And for me, instead of letting or allowing segregation to break me down, I've understood psychology to a point how people because of your name can just decide how to treat you nice mm. and or uh, by the texture of your hair which is why I always shave mm. and how or the color of your eyes and how that is benefiting my art mm. and how that is helping me to expand my conversation um, based on um, positioning me internationally and how that uh, so you try to look neutral so, or I should say, uh, less identifiable. Yes. Then, okay. And how, 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 how racism gives content to my craft instead of breaking me down? Mm. Because I don't get angry towards racism. It's stupid to be angry on an angry person. Mm. But if you laugh and give them a hug, then you actually like you off the grid, and they don't know what you think or how you feel. And I uh. think. Such strategy is winning before it's winning the war even before the battle because I look at the situation in South Africa and I'm like, you know what, I'm an artist. I'm not gonna throw rocks in the street, but I am gonna do a painting and I am gonna sell it to somebody that I know that mm. these people claim that we are so and so and so and so and so. They got so much to say about us. Okay, it's fine, but guess what? How is it possible that the same people are the ones that collect my craft? Mm. It's interesting you said this thing about, about laughter because one of the things I interview a lot of people and one of the, I, interview, just, I, I, I interviewed a good f a friend of Steve Biko mm. and he, he said something in fact it's on my interview t with him that was extraordinary to me that mm. no, I never heard anybody say Steve Biko used to laugh a lot and throw them off they said what the heck's wrong with this guy exactly. why does he laugh what yeah <laughs> and it works mm. because I mean Everything we do is energy. It's either you receive or you send. But the type of energy that laughter carries is a type of aura that they're receiving only what you're giving and what you're giving mm. them is love. Mm. But they're so angry to receive love to a point that they end up trying to find confusion to lean upon. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I got to go back to my original thing for you, which is I'm sorry, man. I don't know how old you are. Oh, but yes, you're much, I, I but I don't know. Hold on. This is like, this is before you there. <laughs> but the kind of wisdom that you're espousing, I've, I'm an old guy. Yeah, I've been on the planet like, you know, seven decades. And I'm oh just, uh, I just let you know <laughs> that I know a lot of people that's been on the planet seven decades or six decades, five decades, four decades. They don't <laughs> want to have nearly as much. Yeah. Wisdom as you. So now you can answer the question if you wish. Thank you. Oh, I just turned 27 in June. I'm Whoa, a Gemini. Oh, yeah. Lordy B. 27? Yeah. What an age? I was born in 1995. I always make a joke. I say I was not born during the apartheid, so you can't expect me to behave like a slave. <laughs> 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 but, you know, um, but they call us, um, what, what they call us? In America, they say, Millennium. South Africa, they say free bonds. I say free out of what, though? Mm. What? Mm. what are you mm. talking about? Oh, okay. Now he. Now you know this. Did, uh, let, uh, I'm gonna uh, let me stop right there because that was a really good place to stop. Oh man, I didn't even. Go, I don't. I'm not even gonna thank you. I'm just gonna say later. <laughs> <laughs>